Welcome to the Evangelism Podcast. I'm Daniel King and I'm excited about telling people about Jesus. Today I have a very special guest with me, Dave Gibson. He is from Grace Church in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Thank you for being with me today. Daniel, thrilled to be with you. So you are the missions pastor at the church, but you are involved in so many different missions opportunities around the world. Tell me a little bit about what you do. Well, my uh, company and I believe missions. Uh, I'm the missions and evangelism pastor at Grace Church, but the Lord has extended that reach into ministries like finishing the task, working with the evangelism, the church planting, uh, finish lines, um, the chairman of the board of Global Alliance for Church Multiplication, also the U.S. director for Goal Movement, uh, part of the Global Goal Movement, trying to mobilize believers all around the world to be sharing the gospel. Yeah, I absolutely love the, the Go Movement. I was with uh, Mr. Werner Nijigal, who founded the Go Movement in Malawi this last year. And I got to interview him on the Evangelism Podcast, and it was great. So if, if you want to go back and listen to his interview, uh, you can find uh, Werner's story, is a wonderful uh, man of God from Germany who has this vision to equip the entire body of Christ to, to, to share the gospel. And so tell me a little bit about what you do with the Go Movement and, and how they're equipping people. Well, the mantra, the theme is every believer is a witness for Jesus. It came out of the Global Day of Prayer led by Graham Power. He mobilized almost 200 million people to be praying together on that Global Day of Prayer on Pentecost weekend. Werner approached uh, uh, Graham Power years ago, about a dozen years ago, and he says, why don't we couple prayer and evangelism and uh, make a, a global outreach day on that same weekend, Pentecost weekend. Can't think of a better time to be sharing the good news of the Easter story, and then 50 days later says, wait until you receive power from on high. Receive the power of the Holy Spirit, and you shall be my witnesses. And so that became a global outreach day. And then it turned into a global outreach month. So the window between uh, May 1 and the end of May is a time we call the Grow Month. Trying to mobilize believers. It's really a simple, uh, every believer is a witness for Jesus Christ. We say everyone can reach someone and together we can reach the world. And so the question is, who's your someone? Someone in your family, someone in your neighborhood, someone in the workplace, uh, someone that you recreate with. And identify those someones, get five of those individuals. We call it our favorite five or my five. And then we employ a real simple strategy. Pray for them and care for them. And then lovingly and appropriately try to share Jesus Christ with them. So, so the prayer, care, share. And it's not a program, it's not an event that people go to, but it's just individual believers uh, who are oftentimes, so many Christians are sitting on their blessed assurance in the church waiting for the Lord to return without ever sharing their faith. In fact, Bill Bright said that, uh, I don't know where he got the statistic, but 95% of Christians will go to the grave without ever leading one person to faith in Christ. So we're trying to move the dial on that, really energize people to be witnesses for Jesus Christ. There was an estimated close to 100 million Christians uh, sharing the gospel this past May. And uh, we've got a group of guys, guys like Greg Steer and Warner and myself, we've got a one-a-day challenge, kind of like the ice bucket challenge. Now, now tell me about the, the one-a-day challenge. Okay. Well, we said one-a-day in May uh, that we're going to ask the what, what do you mean by one-a-day? One what? Trying to share Jesus with at least one person every day. We say, go look for that one lost sheep, Luke 15. Uh, Jesus said, leave the 99 righteous. We need to get out of the church and go after that one lost sheep, that one person. Look for the person of peace who's receptive to the message and the messenger. And uh, ask God to lead us to that person. And uh, the one a day challenge is that I'm going to try to uh, pray for someone, care for somebody, and then try to share the gospel with uh, at least one person every day in the month of May. That's expanded to beyond that. Now it's one a day every day. So. One a day, every day. And so if you're listening, I challenge you to take up that commitment that you'll lead at least one person to Christ every single day. You know, I'm reminded of the story of D.L. Moody. He had a commitment to lead someone to Jesus every single day of his life. And, and one day someone talked to him and said, hey, did you lead someone to Jesus today? And he says, yes, two and a half people. And they said, two and a half. Like, oh, you mean you, you led two adults and one child to the Lord? He says, no, no. He says, I led... Uh, two children and one adult 
because the, the children, they have their entire lives ahead of them, but the adult, his life is half over. Um, and I also remember of John Hyde. They called him Praying Hyde. He was a missionary in uh, what is now northern Pakistan and over into India. At that time, it was one country. And he made a commitment to uh, pray that at least one day, uh, that at least one soul would be led to Jesus every single day. And he, he, he challenged all the Christian believers there. Let's let's believe God and pray for at least one person to be saved every single day. And uh, in the first year, uh, they had 365 people that got saved. They completed that goal. Yeah, in fact, that was in 1908. That that story really challenged me years ago when I was great. How would you like to be known as Daniel Praying King or Dave Praying Gibson? John Praying Hyde. He prayed for souls. He had a burden for souls. In fact, his heart was in such a rough condition. He went to the cardiologist. He said, if you don't change your patterns, he prayed with such fervency and intensity that his heart actually moved in his heart cavity. He prayed for one soul a day and had about 400 the first year in 1909. He uh, prayed for two souls a day, and the Lord gave him over 800 that came to Christ. And then the next year, 1910, he prayed for four souls a day. And uh, the Lord answered that prayer, and I said, boy, how big is my faith? That, he was leading those people to Christ, and they, they were being baptized and consecrated to the Lord. Uh, I just said, well, Lord, do I have enough faith to ask for at least one opportunity every day? And uh, I, I just really believe we need to see people in the church energized and mobilized for the gospel. That's why I hang around guys like Warner and Greg Steer with Dare to Share. And guys like you, Daniel, you inspire me. Yeah. Well, uh, John Hyde there, there in Pakistan uh, started a convention called the Sialkot Convention, and it is the longest running Christian convention in Pakistan. And so a few years ago, I was invited to be one of the speakers, and they said, this, this conference, now over a hundred years, was all the way back to, to praying high. And so when I was there, they took me to the house that he used to, to sleep in, and they showed me his bed, and, and beside the bed, there, there's bumps in the ground where they say his knees were when he used to get wow. beside his bed and pray. And so even a hundred years later, I don't know if it's really his bumps, but, but they, they had that tradition that, that he had been a, a, a prayer warrior and had such a, a tremendous impact. Most of the believers in Pakistan to this day trace their spiritual heritage back to that commitment that John Hyde made to, to share the gospel. And they said that he was so excited about sharing the gospel that like, one day he was walking down the, the path and talking to a Hindu man, telling him about Jesus, led him to Jesus, and there was an irrigation ditch right beside the road. He says, come on, let's baptize you right now. And so they just jumped in the irrigation ditch and they baptized him. So I think we need more of that yeah. fervor for both prayer and for witnessing right. today. Yeah, and I, I, I think that's a prayer that the Lord loves to answer. I pray that every day. I was traveling to uh, uh, San Francisco with a colleague, a guy from the church businessman, got into the church or into the hotel really late, retired after midnight. And uh, you know, it says in Colossians 4 uh, 2 to 6, is devote yourself to prayer, be alert in it, let's be watchful, keep your spiritual antenna out, and be thankful. And he says, Pray for me that God will open up the door for the ministry of the word that I can speak for the mystery of Christ. I call it praying for Bob every day, first of all, for a burden for the lost, then open doors of opportunity. You know, in Romans 9, uh, Paul said, I have deep, deep anguish in my soul for my countrymen who lost the burden. We need to ask the Lord to break our hearts and give us a heart of compassion and a burden for the lost like He does. And open doors for the gospel. He says, pray for me that God will open the door. And that I would boldly proclaim it as I should. Paul uh, prayed for that in Ephesians 6, 19 and 20. He said, pray for me that whenever I open my mouth, words will be given to me that I might fearlessly make more mystery of the gospel. And I boldly proclaim it as I should. We'll pray for Bob. And well, anyway. Okay, okay, so yeah, pray for Bob. B O B. So B stands for uh, a burden, burden for the lost. Burden for the lost. O stands for uh, open doors for the gospel. Open doors for the gospel. And the second B stands for boldness, a holy boldness to share. All right. So so burden, open doors, and boldness. And so every day, pray for Bob. All right. Pray for Bob. Well, I did on that particular day. Prayed for uh, that God would open up a door. Came into the hotel. 
checked in, and it's like the Lord said, Dave, you need to pray for this woman. Neela Padadar, a gal from India, and I said, Neela, um, we're gonna, before we retire here tonight, like, you seem like you're really discouraged. Is there something we can pray about? And her eyes welled up with tears as she shared. She said, my husband and I came to the U.S. 10 years ago, purchased two hotels. This last year, a man came in and started destroying our property. And my husband went out to restrain him. As he did, he reached into his coat pocket and he pulled out a gun and he shot my husband in the head. She's crying as she's sharing the story. We begin to weep along with her. And uh, their manager came out, the guy turned the gun on the manager, shot and killed him, and her husband died in her arms. And she was about as empty and lonely and distraught as I've ever seen a person. I said, Neela, I don't even know what to say, but can we just pray right now? We prayed and we prayed and we prayed for her and that God would be merciful and be gracious to her and just have compassion on this dear woman. And just uh, We had a prayer meeting there that night and then I got done and I said, Neela, has anybody shared with you how you could know the God we were just talking to in a personal way? She said, no, but please do. Uh, after many years of evangelism training, I perceived that it might be a witnessing opportunity. So I, I just proceeded to share about Jesus, the good news of the gospel, that God created us to be with Him. Our sins separate us from Him. And sin can't be removed by good works. Paying the price for sin, Jesus died, rose again, and everyone who trusts in Him alone will have eternal life. And that life of Jesus starts now and lasts forever. The simple message of the gospel. The Holy Spirit just came upon her. She uh, broke down and gave her life to Christ. This Hindu woman that found new life in Jesus Christ, and the tears of anguish turned to tears of joy. She was just overwhelmed, and she came out and around the counter, and she hugged us and said, "God brought you to me tonight. You're God's angel." I said, "Neela, I'm not an angel. Just ask my wife Wendy." But uh, I said, "God did bring us together," and I could have just checked in, taken the key, and said, "God bless you, Neela. Good night." But God said, "You know, be alert, be watchful." be devoted to prayer and then God will move and give you opportunities when we start praying for those opportunities. The divine order for witnessing is talk to God about men, then talk to men about God. And we want to try to build a bridge from our heart to their heart that Jesus can walk across and touch their lives and that heart of compassion. So that was a cool story. Neela just was uh, radically transformed by the power of Jesus and I, I'm addicted to souls. I mean I want to and that one a day challenge, and sometimes it's two or three a day. We were here at Together 22, we've had a plethora of opportunities to share the gospel. Yeah. I know that you mentor and encourage many evangelists and missionaries. What advice would you give to someone who, who has a heart for evangelism? Maybe a, a young evangelist or someone who wants to go to the mission field. What advice would you give them? Grow deep in your walk with Jesus and go wide in your witness. I don't think it's one or the other. It's the two wings of the earth. Deep and wide. Deep and wide. Deep in discipleship, wide in your witness for Christ. That's evangelism. I believe evangelism will fuel discipleship and discipleship should fuel evangelism. And I think we look at it as an either or proposition sometimes in the church. But they're growing deep and uh, every day renew your first love for Jesus. Uh, ask the Lord to uh, give you that reverential fear and awe of Him. And uh, really pray for that burden for souls. That you really have a burden. You know, Jesus said the good man out of the good treasure of his heart will bring forth what is good. The evil man out of the evil treasure will bring forth what is evil. Luke 6, 44 to 46. For the mouth will speak from that which fills the heart. You know the way they got the early church to witness? You just took your hand away from their mouth. They said, we can't stop talking about that which we've seen and we've heard. I think we've got a heart issue. And to, uh, we've lost the heart for the Lord, the heart for the lost. Keep cultivating that heart for the Lord and heart for the lost. And then be bold. Uh, and pray for Bob every day. I mean, there's a lot of things I would share with them, but hang around people. You want to stay hot for God, hang around people, people that are on fire. That's why a guy like Greg Steer, we're a couple of uh, one-string guitar guys. I mean, uh, people that are really passionate about the Lord and passionate about evangelism. And that's why I'm drawn to you, Daniel, because you're the same kind of guy. You're a one-string guitar guy. And uh, you know, renew your first love for Jesus every day. Hang around people that are on fire. And then be active in sharing your faith. Philemon 6 says, I pray that you'll be active in sharing your faith 
so that you'll have a full understanding of every good thing that you have in Christ Jesus. I don't think we have a full understanding of every good thing we have in Christ if we're not actively sharing our faith. I've got a picture of my wife on my phone. And I'm not embarrassed to show it to people. She's very beautiful. But, uh, you know, I'll, I'll introduce people. But can you imagine if I had Wendy by my side? I said, well, honey, I'm kind of embarrassed to introduce you to other people. Uh, no, I love to talk about my wife. We love to talk about things we love. And there's someone I love even more than my dear wife, Wendy, of 37 years. It's Jesus. I am so radically in love with Jesus. Be so in love with Jesus that it becomes contagious. And I love to introduce other people to him. And I'd encourage them to do that. And that the Lord will set you on fire, young evangelists, and people will come and watch you burn. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on the Evangelism Podcast. It's great to have you here today. Thank you, Daniel. Great to get to know you better. And uh, thanks for the good work that you're doing, too, to reach the world for Jesus. Thank you. That was excellent. Uh, give me your email address. Dave.Gibson at grace.church. I've got one good story on the on the ambulance story, if you want me to tell that. You want to tell one more sure. story? Sure, I'll tell you one more story. All right. You got to move a little bit closer because my arm's getting tired. Okay. Let me see if this is still going. All right. Okay. Yeah, now that's better. Hey, you know, wait, hold on. You know, Daniel, I've got a scar on my arm here. It's a daily reminder. I had a triple bypass back in 2008 and a mild heart attack. Uh, and I was pretty healthy going before that time. Woke up with some pressure in my chest. Called 911. Next thing I know, I'm in my, pulled out of my house on a gurney. And uh, the paramedics had arrived. And my five kids are watching Dad pulled out of the house on a gurney. It's quite a feeling. And I uh, got into the ambulance. We're going down to the hospital. Wasn't having cardiac arrest. But I, I, I looked at the guy. His name was Doug. He said, uh, I said, Doug, you know, I don't think this thing's going to turn out bad. But if it does, you need to know in no uncertain terms. I know where I'm going to spend eternity. How about you? So the whole way down to the hospital, uh, I'm sharing Jesus with them. I thought, man, if I'm going to go down, I might as well try to bring one last, last soul with me. Got to the hospital, I said, Daniel, let's, this ride might have been just for you. And I uh, never saw him since that day. I asked him to promise me he'd come to Grace Church sometime. He'd come up and say hello. He said he would. And uh, I had the triple bypass. I ended up uh, having open heart surgery. I called Wendy, and my wife, and I said, honey, bring every single track that you could find in the house. And I'm going to share Jesus with every single person that walks through the door in this hospital. I was urgent about the gospel till then, but I was ultra urgent, and I have been every day since. My life is short, hell is hot, and I want to do everything I can to prevent people from going there, live my life to depopulate hell and populate heaven for the glory of Christ. So I'm sharing Christ to these people, and it's led to things like this one a day challenge. Ten years later, I'm down at, uh, in Nebraska speaking at a fellowship of Christian athletes event. And a good buddy of mine played for the Corn Huskers. And he was introducing me. He says, Dave doesn't even know this, but we were up in the Minneapolis area this last summer. One of our girls tweaked her knee, and a guy named Daniel, a paramedic, came out. His name is Daniel. And he said, uh, do you go to church anywhere? He says, yeah, I go to Grace Church once in a while. And he said, well, do you know Pastor Dave Gibson? He said, yeah, he's the guy who led me to Jesus Christ through an ambulance ride. And I never knew that uh, he was so far out there. But you know, the word says uh, one will plant and another will water. And it's the Lord who brings forth the increase so that he who plants or he who waters is it. It's the Lord who makes it grow. But uh, you know that God's word never returns void when you plant that gospel seed. It's the power of God and the salvation of those who believe. So, uh, gave me a sense of urgency. So I look at my arm. I, they took one of the veins out of my arm and a couple out of my chest. And, it's my daily reminder of uh, we need to be urgent with the good news of Jesus. Yeah, none of us are promised tomorrow, so we need to make every single second count for God. Amen. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. I think that's an old CT study. Yeah, let's live our lives for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Daniel King is on a mission to save one million souls a year but he can't do it alone. 
Would you consider sowing a financial seed today? To give, please visit www.kingministries.com.